What's up you guys and welcome back to the doctor's office. Um, I am Dr. Kaori Knight here to give you the proper diagnosis and prognosis and everything comics and comic book characters. Today we are going to be diving into the background reading for Blood Hunt. Now Blood Hunt, uh, the first one came out on the first as well as the tie-in Vengeance of the Moon Knight number five. Um, and then, yes, well, on the 4th, a comic book day, our free comic book day, um, the prelude Blood Hunt X-Men number one also came out. Um, but I'm going to get into the background reading and then when you guys come back, um, probably on Thursday, um, we will have the actual Blood Hunt review plus the tie-in as well as the prelude. But I wanted to talk to you guys about the background reading. So there are a few things that Marvel gave to us. Mind you, they have been building up to this for the past officially three years, but due to the background reading and some of the other things that I found, it looks to be maybe about four. Anyway, long time. <laughs> so going into the blood hunt story and going into the background reading there's a lot of moving pieces and a lot of moving parts and i'm going to give you what is on the background reading and basically what happens so the first piece of background reading we have the avengers storyline and i believe it's the avengers storyline that starts in 2018 and it also goes into war of the realms and all of that stuff but it's four issues specifically of the avengers storyline it's 14 15 16 and 17. <laughs> i had to count sorry and those issues are slightly important um not as important as the stuff that is to come but definitely still rather important so in these four issues and actually i would say four point like three two two six seven because blade becomes part of this new set of avengers at the end of book 12 then other stuff happens in book 13, not necessarily related, and then we go back into the story with book 14, 15, 16, and 17. Now, T'Challa is the leader of this particular set of Avengers, and vampires are having a civil war. There is the peaceful vampires, uh, vampires who are slightly loyal to Dracula, and then um, the Legion of the Unliving. So there is civil war amongst the vampires. So Black Panther naturally calls for, I must say Tony, calls for Blade to come in and assist as since you're dealing with vampires, you're going to need uh, the Daywalker Vampire Hunter. Good plan, good idea. And we find that the Legion of the Unliving is looking for Dracula specifically. And Dracula actually ends up in Russia in the hands of the Winter Guard. Legion of the Unliving is specifically specifically looking for him and just killing vampires left and right. Doesn't matter if they're peaceful vampires, if they are children vampires, if they are women vampires, just people who aren't actually doing anything, vampire allies to humans, it doesn't matter. So the leader of the Legion of the Unliving, his name is Shadow Colonel, and he has a dog named Sarge, who is a demon vampire dog, essentially. And they end up, because they're going up against the Avengers and everything like that, and they end up getting captured by the Avengers. Mind you, he is captured with his dog. And essentially, he surrendered, which is what happened, and how he, how he gets into the Avengers' new facility, which, by the way, is inside of a Celestial. And... Um he's there to be interrogated and so instead of captain america or black panther or captain marvel doing the interrogation blade is the one who goes in to do the interrogating and he basically just sits there and talks shit about and to blade um and they kind of start like scrapping a little bit and carol is just like hmm where is the dog that he came in with uh, and it turns out that the reason that the 
Shadow Colonel and Sarge wanted to be captured is because they want to get access to Robbie Reyes, who is the current Ghost Rider. While he's down there trying to figure out what the hell is going on with his car, um, Sarge comes in and basically activates him. He uses his evil magic as a demon dog and activates the Ghost Rider. He definitely wanted to be captured specifically for this. And on top of people wanting to be captured, uh, Dracula gets captured by the Winter Guard and is held in a prison in Russia. And Tony goes there to have a conversation with him. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what is going on? And he, from his cell, starts a prison riot. Now, he doesn't escape or anything like that. And Tony teams up with the Winter Guard to get the prison riot under control. But they tell him afterwards to leave or he was going to be arrested. Um, so there's obviously some political tension there and he ends up or Dracula ends up trying to uh, make a deal with the Winter Guard via the leader of the Winter Guard Red Widow and Tony as well as Black Panther do not like the idea that Red Widow is in charge of the Winter Guard and is completely perfectly fine with talking to Dracula about whatever it was that Dracula needed to talk about. So they try to get Dracula to tell them everything that he knows, what was really going on and things like that. So Dracula gives them a crap ton of information after they kill all of Dracula's brides and they make a deal with him and release him into Chernobyl. After they've done all of these things and Ghost Rider is basically working with the Legion of the Unliving. Um, they're going around killing everybody yet again. They're going, they broke into this place so that they could kill the kids that are in there. But when Robbie gets in there and he's like, you know, you need to destroy them, he's like, fucking no. Uh, so then when the Avengers show up, he's like, well, then fight your teammates. So Carol feels really bad for him because Robbie Reyes is still a child like he's still a teen he's still a kid he's still young compared to everybody else on the team and he's still experienced like trying to get experience with his powers and he actually really doesn't want to be the Ghost Rider so because he doesn't want to be the Ghost Rider he's just like he's struggling with these powers of his and <laughs> they end up fighting him but you know they end up getting him back they do end up getting him back and i think one of the funniest things about this whole situation is that uh shadow colonel has like a green creature on his shoulders at all times and the reason being is he took a piece of man thing so that he could have unlimited weapons or stakes to kill vampires with and he calls it boy thing boy thing ends up with blade <laughs> <laughs> he snatched that right on off of him and Blade actually when they finally have their final showdown Blade actually ends up decapitating Shadow Colonel killing him and uh, Thor has a dog named Thori who acts, actually ends up taking down Sarge enter Thori who is a hellhound um, <laughs> who talks they capture they capture Sarge and the Avengers capture Sarge and then um, in Chernobyl, Dracula has declared this new vampire nation with the rest of the um, Legion of the Unliving at his side because the Shadow Colonel was his son and this was all his plan stemming from a story that happened starting where the Captain Britain in my 13 started in 2008 there is a particular storyline where he is trying to get a bid in the UK to start a vampire nation and they tell him to get the fuck out so he ends up still getting his vampire nation just in Chernobyl and this is this is essentially his plan so it is that it does end up being recognized as an official legal nation by the un on the condition that blade be the one uh to be the sheriff there like that is the condition and it is like the requirement of the un for this vampire nation to exist as a vampire nation and also it was created literally at the same time as Krakoa. It actually leads us into the next part which is a singular issue of blood <laughs> blade vampire nation. 
Now, the Blade Vampire Nation is essentially what does Blade do here? Like, what is his job as sheriff of this place? So, in this book, Dracula has a public council and it is to appease the UN um, as like that he has a council of people and humans and vampires do live here. It is a vampire nation but humans and vampires do share the space. Now why you as a human would want to live amongst vampires by or slash in Chernobyl is beyond me but okay. Uh, now the humans serve kind of like a like a dual purpose so there are humans who are basically like they do the grunt work they are the janitors they are the street cleaners they are the trash people they have like the low level jobs right and then you have the elite vampires and then you have the vampires who are in like the corporate jobs and like the higher higher paying jobs but the humans do the grunt work and then you have humans who don't do any work because the and they don't pay any bills they don't pay any rent they do nothing but live this super lavish life because they are the vampire food source so in order for them to live there and live there rent free they have to be a food source for the vampires so that the vampires there don't go outside of the nation to try to find food and yes, yes the un lets this happen because those people are there on their own solution now there are some people who end up getting turned so like if a vampire dies a human is turned so that they can keep up with the population so like some of them end up being turned and then there are humans that move there uh to replace the human that was also turned so they kind of keep just like a running life circle going on now his dracula's public council was set up to go to a meeting i believe and one of the council members uh corvus ends up being murdered by human mercenaries and blade is sent to like track down who did this and basically why and the two of them on the page together is hilarious because he's like you know blade my friend can i call you that and blade's like no and he's like my friend and then just continues talking and blade's just like i am not your friend i don't like you i'm here because it's my job <laughs> um the two of them on the page hilarious so um he has blade to do this and blade as the sheriff does go and try to find out what happened now the mayor of the city who is also part of the public council tells blade oh you know these four bodies were found here's the picture and there's very clearly five people in the picture but you only have four bodies and blade's just like now why would you tell me there are four bodies when there's five people in this picture so he figures out that one of the mercenaries was a woman and she ends up just staying inside of the vampire city and essentially she's just trying to get the fuck out of there but she didn't really have a way to do so so um he gets her out of there but he tells her like she tells him like we had to be paid so um i think she's either a countess or a baroness she paid the mercenaries but the people on the council paid her but dracula paid them so dracula set them up to set her up to set corvus up because he got all like they knew exactly where corvus was going to be sleeping and that Bla uh, uh, dracula was supposed to be the one that was there so it was a setup of a setup of a setup of a setup and it was really kind of just to get them out of the way so that his private council called the kitchen cabinet which he uses a lot of restaurant references to like make his point throughout this book um his kitchen cabinet which is literally like a bunch of different people from history um that he turned having a conversation down there under his castle and he's like these are actually the people that i fucking consult so the public council i don't give a fuck about them i just need them to get out of the way uh so he was perfectly fine with them going down <laughs> I really like how both of these were written the Avengers uh, situation as well as the Blade one shot and the storytelling from the Avengers side um, 
I thought was pretty good. I would probably give those four books like a nine. Uh, I kind of wanted a little bit more because I, I think it's because I have to find the other readings where things are leading into each other because again they've been planting these seeds for a really long time so it's a lot of digging trying to get to the bottom of it because when i get into the review for blood hunt and we get into the spoilers a lot of the things are happening because of what has previously happened and i love that they put the background reading out there so that people could essentially get caught up um these two basically were just like about the Vampire Nation situation. It was getting the Vampire Nation established and getting the Vampire Nation in order. So we now have the Vampire Nation established. Dracula is now an established and recognized power. And he now has the council that he wants to have thanks to Blade. With him and Blade having this not relationship but situationship going on because later on he's just like i wish you i i really miss when you were just the, the sheriff and not here to annoy me type shit so their frenemy ship <laughs> is it gets a little bit more intense afterwards but i appreciate the build up from the nation to blade being in there and getting kind of just like this is what it looks like in here blade one shot i give like a nine as well it was actually really good it's very it's very interesting read and it does again give you the background on or the inside information on how the nation works and like what's going on in there and how his power uh, dracula's power as the leader of this nation is so like it's half and half it's wanted because vampires now have a place to be like peacefully and legally and then it's not wanted because he now has absolute power over these people who want to be here so i do like that and it kind of just segues into the next part now, segueing forward, we go to the Moon Knight series that is also part of the background reading. So it is issues 13 through 18. They put issue 12 in there, and I think issue 12 is actually important. So what happens in issue 12 is a continuation of what's been happening. They are going up against the Zodiac, um, and reese who is moon knight's assist assistant at midnight mission has been turned into a vampire he also has somebody there named soldier who used to be part of hydra and is also working with them and he's also teamed up with his ex tigra as well as the other fist of Conchu named hunter's moon okay that is currently the midnight mission team that is on like right now so what's happening is that they are at um they are down somewhere and they're trying to rescue hunter's moon from these zombie moon knights and him and uh, mark specter and tigra so they're trying to rescue hunter's moon currently while they're trying to rescue hunter's moon soldier has dressed up as mr knight and um is there with reese to confront zodiac now after zodiac gets done monologuing he ends up shooting at them well shooting at moon knight who is actually soldier and he shoots reese but the bullet shoots through reese and into soldier who is either dead already or dying and hunter's moon his body kind of shows up and they're trying to make sure that he's still alive and it's the zombie moon knight tigra and mark specter moon knight going up against zodiac and all of his minions and he tries to kill zodiac but moon knight's like nah i got it he tries to kill zodiac and stephen grant actually comes out to tell him no and he says something to reese which confuses her because she's never heard of stephen grant before and he just kind of he gets away or gets arrested or something like that 
and Huntress Moon actually ends up being alive. But they do turn Soldier into a vampire to keep him from dying. Now, moving forward, we are in a conversation with Taskmaster and a man who calls himself the Tutor. And the Tutor is the leader of a vampire cult or faction called the Structure. And he wants Moon Knight dead because Moon Knight is not necessarily like trying to enter on his territory or anything like that but he is challenging his exclusivity which is uh, exclusivity which is what everybody kind of just keeps mentioning and it's the fact that moon knight keeps making vampires although accidentally so the structure turned reese into a vampire but reese defected back to moon knight so that is a vampire in moon knight like faction and then reese turned soldier into a vampire so that is another vampire in his in his faction and it's not that it was happening on purpose it was just kind of happening and he does not like that so he's asking taskmaster he's paid taskmaster to give him as much information about moon knight as humanly possible and taskmaster starts giving him all these details and he's like well, will you kill him for me? And Taskmaster is like, fuck no. <laughs> He's like, you paid me for information and you weren't even listening to me when I'm talking to you. He's like, you sound scared. I am. Taskmaster admitting being terrified of Moon Knight, specifically the one that the situation he references, not just the fact that Moon Knight is just crazy, but the one that he references is when Moon Knight took a helicopter and flew it into a building specifically to kill Taskmaster in their fight. Even when the tutor offers him a crap ton of money, he's just like, no, and you're not going to find anybody in the city who's willing to do it. So can't help you so he leaves and then he goes to talk to moon knight who is um interrogating vampires that he is tied to a post about the structure he wants the tutor he doesn't matter how he gets them that's what he wants and he's like basically like making these like people burn in the sun and taskmaster's like hey you know just fyi the tutor is trying to kill you he tried to pay me but i'm terrified of you so i said no and he's just like okay <laughs> he's like and you're telling me this because he's like because i'm fucking scared of you specifically uh so he does tell him that since nobody in the city is crazy enough to do it that the tutor is probably going to look outside of the city for some assistance and so that's exactly what he does he comes up with these two people to kill him and i can't and it's like nemian and maul is the la the other one the chick i can't remember their names they weren't really important to me but <laughs> Uh, he hires them to kill Moon Knight. After finding out all of this information, Moon Knight decides to go and because he's supposed to have therapy sessions because previously he tried to take over the world, took down the Avengers and all that stuff. So as part of his probation uh, to not go to whatever prison that they were going to try to throw him in, he has to talk to a therapist so that they can assess whether or not he's going to try to start a war on behalf of Khonshu again. And reese has asked him who is stephen grant so he decides that he is going to convene his personalities stephen and jake and talk to them and basically tell them to go the hell away um that conversation that happens between the three of them was probably one of the most intense conversations and one that he really really needed to have with all the personalities because he's not told his team except for tiger because i believe she knows but he has not told them about his did he hasn't told them anything and her asking him she asks him a couple of times and he just kind of puts it off he doesn't really want to answer it and so he's basically telling them i don't need you i can do this on my own we had an agreement and they're like we no, because you made friends in different places high and low places because of the two of us and you mark specter keep pushing those people away because you're trying to do it on your own and you cannot and he's like actually yes i can and blah blah, blah. and while he's having this meeting with these two personalities he is going up against the two assassins that were hired at first he was doing a really good job winning but he then started to get his ass beat and they are basically like if you can do it on your own why are you losing this fight and then he kind of just realizes 
he can't do it on his own that was the whole point of him creating midnight mission is because he can't do what he's trying to do by himself i really really like this book because it's important and it's kind of like a turning point in his personality and he just finally allows them to assist but he's already been beaten up and is unconscious and when tigra and hunter's moon show up you know they kind of just take him back to the place so he can heal up after he's done this he agrees with them that they can't do it separately it has to be done together so he uses his stephen grant persona to go and continue to make a lot of money because mark specter kind of lost it all so continues to make money as well as use the money to use his connections to try to find out who these assassins are and then jake lockley does the same with trying to figure out what is going on with the on the vampire front because he knows the bartender that he typically talks to when he goes to the bar has some information um because her brother is a vampire so you know he finds out that her brother is in Chinatown and Chinatown in this situation is rather important. So they start to work together very seamlessly and he comes to the conclusion that he has to go to Chinatown and try to convince the person who is leading Chinatown that they need to move against the structure and fast. Now, at the end of all of this, when he has come up with this plan, he decides to tell the rest of the team about his DID. And Soldier kind of just doesn't ask any questions. He's like, you know, that's not really my business. <laughs> if that's what's going on with you, that is what's going on with you. It is not my job to question you or anything like that. I am here to help. Um, Reese is like, why wouldn't you just tell me? Like, did you think you were going to like make me run away? And you know, he's like, I care about you. They share a hug. It's just like a brother sister thing almost. Tigra, I'm pretty sure already knew because she is his ex and they have worked together when they were part of the Avengers. So, you know, she didn't, he didn't need to tell her, but he does tell um, Hunter's Moon and he also tells Hunter's Moon that they're going to go to Chinatown and Hunter's Moon kind of punches him in the face and he's like why did you hit me and you know he's like why are you trying to like go there we're supposed to kill them and it's like it's kind of weird on Hunter Moon's behalf because Reese is a vampire and Soldier is also now a vampire and you're not in a hurry to try to kill them you know what I'm saying but you are you know, like in a hurry to like kill all the other ones kind of weird but you know whatever so he disagrees about going to um chinatown and he just kind of leaves they go to chinatown and while they are in chinatown hunter's moon runs into the two assassins but we'll get to that fight in a minute so he's in chinatown talking to the leader of chinatown and he asks her you know i need to move against the structure will you do it with me and she's basically like why would i help you type thing and he calls her a coward and a waste of time and she nearly chokes the shit out of him quickly and basically he's just trying to like not only understand why she won't do it but try to get her to see what it is that he's trying to do and they basically come to learn that the reason she can't move against the structure is because she would then be ratted out by the tutor to her previous the person who sired her and she does not want that she has built something here she does not want that because she knows that if she were to come up against the person who sired her she would definitely die now she says that she's the reason for the tutor becoming a vampire but she did not sire him so he took one of her brides and forced the bride to sire him and he because he felt like being a vampire was like the next step in evolution essentially and it just required him or it gave him more power and all of this power that he was seeking and that's what he really wanted was to be a vampire and she didn't sire him so they come to basically an understanding he says you can't do it but i can and i need you to help me do that so she tells him i know where the tutor is going to be and win but and i can get you in the exact same room as him but when i get you into that exact same room as him you are also going to be in the room with the most powerful vampires in the world here and now i say honey he does not care <laughs> he wants to be in that room bad 
so she gives him that information now the whole entire time that they are talking to the leader of chinatown hunter's moon again is going up against the assassins and he is beating it so much so that they decide to call a horde of vampires to assist and it's not until he has literally like killed all of the vampires and is depleted of literally any kind of energy he's also injured like being stuck with arrows and like pieces of wood and things like that that they threaten him and tell him oh you know tell moon knight we said this and actually on the other hand we'll tell him ourselves and they snap his neck on the roof and the when tigra and moon knight find him he's not very happy obviously and i thought it was interesting i thought that was very very interesting and it's even more interesting that moon knight confronts the two of them head on and takes them to midnight mission dragging one of them on uh on a chain while he's on a motorcycle the other one following on a motorcycle and he takes them to midnight mission and it's almost like he takes them to this absolute crazed haunted house and fucks with their minds and <laughs> gets them to admit what happened they were like you know i'll give you all of the money and he's like actually i can't accept anything that you're saying i don't give a fuck about what you're talking about and it's really not up to me you killed hunter's moon he was like but the problem is and when i tell you that this was one of the coldest pictures i have ever seen in a comic he said the fists of Kanchu do not die he said that is my brother <laughs> like and of course he's alive and well perfectly fine they defeat them get them chained up and throw them into a window um, as they crash the vampire conclave get to the vampire conclave it's very very obvious that the tutor is really looking for the attention of dracula and but it's kind of difficult to tell what kind of attention from dracula he's really wanting he wants to move against dracula uh, according to uh, the leader of Chinatown he wants to make a move against Dracula but it's also kind of like he just wants Dracula's attention he wants him to recognize him he wants him to be like you know pay attention to me like a kid looking for attention type thing and with the representatives from the vampire nation coming to the conclave he's just like hmm I hope to talk to Dracula here soon and they're like Dracula sends his regards and his regrets <laughs> like Dracula doesn't want anything to do with you and he's not really happy about that so he just continues on talking about how they're going to build this perfect relationship as a conclave and just like a group of vampires and Tigra and Moon Knight crash the party of course looking fabulous might I add and they start fighting everybody and the thing is is that he put holy water in the sprinkler system one of my favorite parts of this with he pulls out the umbrella and there's a standing under it looking fabulous might i add and he goes up against the tutor and he ends up killing the tutor and the tutor being the leader of the structure the structure now does not have a leader so it was very interesting and then um, there was a human who was there who ended up being sent by Moon Knight to Dracula to make sure that Dracula kept himself in check. And it's just like Dracula didn't really even want to be there. So I don't think Dracula actually cares. Uh, when it comes to this particular story, I think this one is the most important, mainly because the structure, which is the only other like faction competing with Dracula, has now lost its leader and what do you do with that like what happens from there do they get a new leader um does the faction fall just completely helplessly out of control because you've also killed leaders from different factions and it's very interesting um how they decided to do that um 10 out of 10 for this these uh this like what six books um well done <laughs> the the writing the emotion and i'm telling you the book where he i'm pretty sure it's like either book 14 or 15 i can't really remember which one but when he is convening his personalities to have this conversation it is a conversation that is much much needed and it turned his personality on its ear like he needed to hear that 
from them. Like you're, I mean, you're talking to yourself, but he needed to hear those things from the both of them. And he was coming to the realization that people don't like you because you constantly push them away and make it about you when this is essentially about us. You cannot do this alone. So that whole conversation, absolutely 100% needed. And it just, I loved it. Um, but then of course, it segues even further. Now, moving forward, we go into Brielle, daughter of Blade. Brielle is Blade's daughter, and she's trying to essentially live a normal life. She loves playing softball, and she has two best friends. Um, and while she's in school, she discovers that she has these powers, and she decides to take a break from softball because she doesn't understand what's going on with her, and it was her powers started coming in and then she was able to be discovered by other people because Dr. Strange had died. So the incantation he placed on her ended up going away. Now, a new girl comes, her name is Whitney, and she's basically like a smart ass to Brielle, like almost instantly. And her, Brielle's two friends, Jay and Rachel, are like, oh fuck no type shit. With that being said, uh she finds out that whitney is actually a hunter and she discovers this while she's trying to understand what exactly is going on with her because like when she was hanging out with her friends and she well she went to go practice softball swung her bat and broke it but she wasn't able to show her friends again during the day because her powers were really only kind of active at night. He attacks her and you know she calls her she calls Brielle a monster and she's like I haven't done anything I'm not a vampire or anything like that and she has that conversation with her mother about vampires and her mom's like not really like reacting the way that she thinks that she should and so she's like well you know it's kind of time to talk to your dad. So uh Whitney comes back to the school and like tries to befriend Brielle uh, in her weird or sarcastic way after their fight and she was like well you know you can come with me tonight and she gets Brielle out of being grounded or whatever so that they could go to this vampire nest and she pretends to cut herself because she wants to see Brielle lose control and because Brielle has that feral bloodlust because of course she's coming into her powers as a vampire hiding again and Whitney locks her into this room where all of these vampires are and she gets into a fight with all these vampires her father ends up showing up and help her control her bloodlust her serum though that her mother gave her like broke so her father shows up saves her and then they kind of just have the conversation of you know I'm with the Avengers I am part vampire I am half vampire which makes you part vampire and you know you have that feral bloodlust so we have to get all of that under control and she asks him to train her he initially says no but then thinking about it he's like you know what you're actually correct because you're gonna have to learn how to defend yourself so they are training and in the midst of them training uh, Saffron, who is her mother, gets kidnapped by a clone of Deacon Frost and Whitney ends up with Saffron's phone. They get into a fight in the bath, her and Brielle get into a fight in the bathroom when Brielle discovers that she has her mother's phone and Brielle was getting suspended for two weeks, but not Whitney, but you know, it's whatever and she basically says that like deacon frost is like her foster dad her mentor or whatever the fuck after they capture blade as well saffron ends up getting away and runs into brielle and they end up getting attacked by whitney she brielle who has been training with her father and has gotten much much better at fighting and everything like that whoops whitney's ass as she should and they go to where the cop or the clone of deacon frost is and her father her father is now in his like berserker rage and there's now like fresh human blood around uh i.e whitney and <laughs> uh, she brielle tries to use whitney as like a bargaining chip but deacon frost is like i don't actually care about her and he throws his sword at her and stabs her and Brielle thinks that she's like that dead or dying but she turns her focus to her father and she finally gets her father to snap out of it he's like literally barely hanging on and he tells her to beat Deacon Frost's ass and she's like bet <laughs> I love that part of the story and she does exactly that 
exactly that and then she does hesitate at the end of it to kill deacon frost but like her father said she is still learning so he assists her in decapitating him now a few days later whitney of course does escape from the hospital that she's at and her mother and her father basically encourage her to not only tell her friends but to continue to grow in her powers which does segue into when blade and brielle go to new york um and run into spider-man which leads us to the two spider-man issues that are um attached to this the miles morales spider-man from 2022 either 2021 2022 now um, the five uh books of brielle blood uh daughter of blade were actually very good i did like their introduction of her and the like instant bond that the two of them share and the fact that it's very obvious that he does also still have some kind of emotion for saffron because he can't and even though it had something to do with brielle he came instantly and his whole situation like the whole situation when the both of them got captured he made sure that saffron was okay before he like started kind of going into his berserker rage um it leads into the spider-man ones it's 10 11 and i included it 12. so miles morales's spidey senses are going completely haywire he can't tell which one is actually a threat and which one isn't and he ends up going at the behest of misty knight to or yeah the behest and request of misty knight to a psychiatrist especially like specializing in like superhero therapy and he goes by sasquatch and he's like uh from the hulk series uh that they mentioned in there and he just assists him in a way to where he needs to think about what is a threat and what isn't now he also ends up running into hightail who was assigned to him by uh the cape killers and they're like people it's like an anti-vigilante group and she's assigned to watch him and so she like kind of attacks him he manages to escape from her go home and realizes that he forgot to take out the trash like his mother asked him to so he's taking out the garbage and he gets attacked by a vampire and vampires aren't necessarily his forte so it's not that he was getting like beat or anything but he was completely unprepared for it but that is when brielle and blade end up showing up now after the two of them show up he tells them that they're there for uh ramir who is like this head honcho vampire and uh he's like turning people randomly and all the things and they team up and before they team up blade gives like uses the magic that he does know and gives miles a special vampire hunting suit so when they go looking for ramir um they like stumble into that nest they get into a fight with ramir and hightail shows up in the way and she thinks that she's doing something until she ends up getting bit and they were actually trying brielle and blade were actually trying to kill her before she turned because having a super speedster as a vampire is not a good idea <laughs> but he didn't want them to kill her so he decided to uh miles morales decided to fight her on his own he managed to incapacitate her and they managed to trap ramir in um the Thing that they were trying to trap him in and she ended up being healed he did kind of just end up riding around with them but he was so exhausted that he fell asleep at the back of their car and um blade and brio kind of just had like father-daughter conversation convert like just talking and it ends up leading into not directly but it does end up um kind of heading towards the blade series now as for the brielle series and the the three spider-man books um i thought they were pretty good i hate coming kind of like in the middle of a series because i kind of want to go back to see what was going on and then continue forward literally like i did with the avenger story and what was going on with robbie reyes and that story was absolutely hilarious um continuing forward but <laughs> this was a specific this was a specific mission so um I like how they melted into each other so we get the introduction of Brielle and then we get Brielle again and I really think that if they continue on that trajectory even after this is done 
Brielle and Miles Morales would be a really great team, I think. I think that would be a really fun team to have. Now, the very last one in this reading, right before this Blood Hunt stuff starts, is the Blade series from 2023. So, <clears throat> Blade is trying to save this woman and she introduces herself as Dana after he saves her at a nightclub and this mysterious assassin man breaks into uh, his like house or building wherever he is and they fight and Blade kills him uh, decapitates him and it turns out that she is actually a primordial eldritch monster or god named the Adana and she attacks Blade leaves and she goes out and like rips the skin off and it's just like walking muscles <laughs> it's really gross actually um so basically she's here to take over the world she is the mother of all evil and she's here to take over the world so he gets captured by the sect um that the assassin was from and he gets tortured for killing him and one of the people are uh, this girl young girl who is part of the sect kills the other people in the sect and rescues blade because she needs his help to stop this whole situation so they end up going to his ex who is a clairvoyant uh arms dealer who deals in like supernatural weapons and things like that named tulip and um they kind of discuss what's going on but they end up getting attacked and Tulip ends up getting taken by a uh, two like one of the heads of the Yakuza who is like a vampire demon hybrid type thing who Blade ends up killing to save her. Uh, now with everything going on Doctor Strange decides to show his face and he's like you know i'm not upset i'm just disappointed so they get told about the the sword of lucifer called lightbringer and it is on a train like a high-speed train that does not stop um and if it does stop it does not stay in one place for more than 10 minutes and they need to get on this train to steal the sword so dr strange says i can get you onto the train they get onto the train fight off all the vampires, rescue some of the people that are captured there for food source, and he fights against the um, vampire who has the sword and the Anna compels him uh, psychically to give Blade the sword and then commit suicide, which he does do. And it essentially was a trap and he ends up in front of Adana with the sword. It was a trick so that Adana could get the sword. So she gets the sword, uh, defeats everybody, and puts a demon inside of Tulip and binds their souls so that she is being tortured and forever in agony uh, just as a spite to Blade. Here I felt bad for Tulip because she did not ask for that, she didn't want that, and Doctor Strange really couldn't help her because like their souls are bound to each other so he can't separate them and the only thing he could do was put a necklace uh, like an enchanted necklace on her and it would ease the agony but she would still she would still be bound to this demon after he has a conversation with dr strange he has dr strange teleport him directly to adana which he does and he is easily defeated it wasn't even like a match for real and she burned him pretty bad and sent his ass back and she said i created this hell from scratch uh just to be a show off and you're here bothering me so burn and get the hell out and that's what happened so he decides that he needs help from a different source a different kind of help and he goes to get help from the one person you would not expect that he would go to get help from and it is dracula now again as i said before him and dracula on the page together phenomenal writing <laughs> they play off of each other so well and he basically tells him that the reason that you're not able to defeat this person or this god is because you think like a man and he's like i am a man and he's like but you're are you you're really not and he like tears apart these demon i mean not these demons, but these vampires that come out and he's and dracula's like i'm not going to tell anybody how much you enjoyed doing that he's like but that was not a work of man it's definitely a work of monster and he's like to be perfectly honest you have to let go 
in order to continue forward. And we all know that Blade doesn't want to do that. And he asks Blade to drink his blood. And Blade's like, no. But then, you know, he starts thinking about it and he's not going to be able to win this without doing it. So he ends up drinking Blade, um, Dracula's blood and becomes like incredibly powerful, getting all kinds of different abilities and whatnot, being able to turn into mist, being able to turn into um, uh, take a wolf form, things like that. It's a call actually from the Hulk who has come into this town where these vampires and these demons have taken over um, one person and he's out there fighting these like vampire demon things, these monstrosities, and he asks Blade for his help. So Blade comes and assists, doesn't take very long, and Blade actually tricks the demon into um possessing his body and you know all of them follow the wolf form of blade out of town only to get defeated by the hulk and thrown up by blade going to santana uh satana hellstrom to ask her to help him get an undead army she can't necessarily do that but she can tell him that the Adana is sworn, like has a pact that she cannot break, where she has to protect a library full of like dark magic books and spells and things like that. She has to protect that. She is literally spellbound to do so. And so he goes to the very extreme, kills all of the people that help, like that guard that library and burns it to the ground. And the Adana, of course, is pissed off at this. And she's like, oh, okay, so you're trying to play with me. You're trying to play in my face. She's like, okay, so we can fight now. So he actually ends up running into the assassin that he had you know, accidentally killed. And they team up, go up against the Adana, and the assassin is actually the one who ends up killing her with the Lightbringer sword. But they are noticing, Tulip and um, Ratha are noticing that he is way more aggressive and angry. And it's very concerning, this personality that he has developed. They don't know what he went to go do. They don't know that he drank Dracula's blood. So he's acting very unusual and they are concerned as they should be. This story I did like. Um, the battle, the, the last fight between him, the assassin and the Adana uh, versus the Adana um, was a little bit lackluster. So um, I kind of wish that there was a little bit more to that because she was beating his ass at every turn and then all of a sudden she's like, killed just like okay so a little lackluster there but i did like the series and it was fun now, not only is the background reading important but it's actually really good writing because if you were to take just those stories and just like those issues and put them into just like one long book like a one graphic novel it would flow together really nicely and it quite literally just leads into what is going on in the blood hunt series so far that review is coming but the background reading while it was kind of a lot gave a lot of insight especially because i read blood hunt first and then i went back to do the background reading and so the things that were happening in blood hunt one made a lot of sense after you do the background reading so i as a like, just personal recommendation would do the background reading first and then do <clears throat> then read blood hunt so the background reading all of the stuff that i did the blood hunt x-men number one vengeance of the moon knight number five blood hunt i think it's honestly how that would go but the background reading was really honestly fun to read and it was a lot of information this is like the first time that i've actually had to take notes on something like this just so that i can make sure that everything that i was looking at was flowing correctly so the background reading score i'm going to give a 9.5 and only because uh it kind of loses itself at the end of the blade series again when the adana is just killed after she made hell from scratch and was wielding the lightbringer like it was a plastic sword and she was like telling people to burn and they were like burning and then just she died <laughs> um so it kind of just like a dropped off a little bit overall 
as the back reading, uh, a 9.5 for sure. Uh, it's informative, it's fun read, and because the some of the series are in the middle of what's going on, it makes you continue on because the writing and the story is so good, you continue on throughout the series and completely forget what you're doing. So, um, I will see you guys on Thursday for the official Blood Hunt review from me and I'm also going to include the Vengeance of the Moon Knight number five and the X-Men, um, the Blood Hunt X-Men number one prelude in there so that you get it in order and then we'll just break it down that way. But thank you again for stopping by the doctor's office and we will see you later.